The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I will call daily upon thee. For thou, O Lord, art good and gracious, and of great mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, and hear me, for I am poor and in misery. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hear it, our Lord Jesus Christ, saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church. And because it cannot continue in safety without thy succor, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who livest and reignest with thee, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading is from Isaiah chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Here ended the first reading. We shall read Psalm 116 together, beginning of the first verse. My delight is in the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my prayer, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon his name. And the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and heaviness. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was in misery and he helped me. Turn again then unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord hath rewarded me. And I, thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the hand of the living. I believed, and therefore will I speak. But I was sore troubled. I said in my haste, all men are lives. What reward shall I give unto the Lord for all the benefits that he hath done unto me? I will receive the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows now in the presence of all his people, 
right there in the sight of the Lord in the death of his saints. Behold, O Lord, how that I am thy servant. I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast broken my bond in sunder. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee. Praise thee, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The lesson from the epistle of this apostle Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at the 13th verse. Brethren, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may, uh, may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the prayer that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The heathen shall fear thy name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy majesty. But the Lord shall build up Zion, and when his glory shall appear, hallelujah, hallelujah. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, hallelujah. Is written in the seventh chapter of St. Luke, beginning at the second verse. Glory to thee, o Lord. And it came to pass the day after that Jesus went into the city, a uh, city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and, then, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, That is a great prophet is risen up among us, and that, that God had visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. The word of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost and Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. Okay, uh, any announcements this morning before we get to one that will take a little time? Are we quiet? Everybody's quiet. We have, we have vestry. We have vestry today. Um, for those of you uh, who are on the vestry, we, we have more than a quorum. Please be there. We'll get some coffee, get started. And then before it rains, we'll get you out in the sunshine once again, you know, before it happens. But we do have an announcement. This is uh, uh, through the Daughters of the American Re Revolution. We've got the Constitutional Week. I would ask Pat if you might make the comment. You can come up here if you'd like. Oh, well, I, I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Can, can you hear her? Me? Why don't you get up this way? That way it can also go on to our, on the video as well. Thank you. Well, good morning. It's that time of year when we get to celebrate our country and our constitution this week. It begins on the 17th, which is Tuesday and we will end uh, the 23rd. So we celebrate it for a week. And uh, on Tuesday, in your homes, with your little bells, uh, you know I handed out bells last year, but if you don't have one, just a little bell, and um, ring it at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. And um, I would suggest that after you ring your bell, you know uh, Father David gave us the little prayer for our country, if you could say that with your family or just to your, with yourself, would be a great, a great thing. And then next Sunday, we are celebrating here at church with a luncheon. And I hope you will come and enjoy all the goodies I have prepared for everybody. <laughs> so um, I would like to share with you that one of the projects that DAR did this, this year for the, the Constitution celebration was to place 2,000 copies of the, of the Constitution in Marion County schools in the middle schools. And they were delivered this week to the schools. So uh, that was one of our projects that we did. And this is, a, this is an old copy of the chaplain's epistle, epistle that we used to use. And I was looking through it, and I found something that I thought, a, a little prayer, that I thought would be a very appropriate for today. And I would like to read it to you. <sighs> oh Lord, we rejoice that by thy hand our beautiful country was made possible, and her future chartered even unto this day. We recognize the great responsibility that is ours to nurture her in liberty and freedom, prosperity and power. In a troubled period of this world, by thought of many, to be crucial time in history, with good battling evil forces for dominion. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other announcements this morning? Wow, we're quite a bunch, that's good. Serve him. There's anything else.
words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be accepted in my sight, my Lord and Redeemer, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. I have a short uh, homily because we do, we are going to move directly into our litany on this day. Um, and the homily, though, will be a part of what uh, Pat had mentioned, part of what this week is about. And also, to, to be very clear, I, I, I must apologize that many times my fellow, uh, my colleagues, my parish priests that I know, uh, don't want to talk about America being a Christian nation. Uh, it's almost political anathema that, that they don't want to talk about it. It might offend somebody. Well, uh, no. No, so my title, I'll read the title first, is The United States of America Was and Is Established as a Christian Nation. Ta-da. I hope that got on video because we need to let people know that this is true. For example, uh, we, we misunderstand, and you may have heard a lot of, and our, by the way, our kids are being taught that that's not true, and then they go on and talk about all these other things. I, I believe uh, the former president, uh, a former president of the United States said that the Muslims had a great part of developing this nation. Uh, sorry, they weren't even here. Uh, when you tell a lie often enough, the whole idea is that you tend to believe those for some reason. Well, all we have to do is go back to what we're really all about. You know, the institutions of the North American Republic, which was, which would become finally the United States of America, had their birth and baptism from free institutions and the genius, I'll call it that, of Christian religion. Full stop. No argument, no backing off, no, oh, but there are other, no, 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 no. All you have to do is go back to the original documents of our union, and it is very clear. This fact alone has given the country its political power. This fact alone has given this country its political power and moral glory, and shed new light on the benevolent nature and adaption of Christian systems to secure the highest political prosperity of any nation on earth. Do not be led astray by saying, well, we're just, you know, the argument I'm hearing now is, oh, we're just lucky. Well, no, there is no such thing. There's no luck. There's no coincidence. It's all part of what God has planned. The Christian religion has a clear and full recognition in the civil constitutions and state papers of the fathers of our republic. This fact is historic in the civil institutions of the country and gives its official documents a Christian feature and influence which belong only you know, we tend to think of London, of English people being very close to us, or Australians, New Zealands being very close to us. Well, we think that because we speak the same language. We may speak it differently, but we speak the same language. We, we speak English. Well, the fact is that that is not correct. For example, what you're seeing in England now, where they can jail people for using the wrong pronouns, and they have done that recently. They're starting to put people in jail for you because there is no there is no uh, system, if you will, of, of, of the ability to have rights. They're not in their, their constitutions. It's not there, it's only here. And all of our Bill of Rights that we have are based on Christian principles. Thus, I would argue that there are many Christians in many countries, but there are not many countries that are Christian. We are that. During the revolution, the states assumed their separate powers, right? and form state constitutions. These civil charters, if you look at them, were full and explicit in the fundamental doctrines of Christian religion, every single one of them. Most of them are what they call blue states now, but they were very red back in those days. The state papers of the Continental Congress were also full of the spirit and sentiments of the Christian system. I mean, I've read them word for word. They are beautiful. You can't go from one sentence to another without mentioning God. They even mention the Trinity. Now that's very clear that it's a Christian concept. Under the great seal of state, official documents were sent out to the nation and the world which affirmed, and here's a quote directly from them, I thought this might be helpful, quote, merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, do we have any confusion of who that is? The merits and mediation of Jesus Christ to obtain forgiveness and pardon of sins and pray that pure, now this is the Congress, right? This is what we're celebrating, Constitution, and all that coming to it. 
that pure and undefiled religion may be universally diffused, that the nation may be made a holy nation. We are not a secular nation. We never were a holy nation, and that the religion of our divine Redeemer, with all its benign influences, may cover the earth as the waters do the sea. That's right in the documentation. That's why they don't teach us in school anymore. They don't want to teach that stuff. It might confuse people for what the new language is. As we see in the formation of all, I picked this one particularly, the state of Massachusetts. Very, very conservative state, right? No. The state of Massachusetts. Members of the colony pray for the continuance of liberties. Here's a quote from their original documentation forming the state of Massachusetts. Your servants are true men, fearing God and fearing king, back then. We could not live without public worship of God, to enjoy our liberty and to walk according to the faith and order of the gospel. Same one you read is the same one they read. We also find in such sentiment and early institutions of higher education. Reverend, you may not realize this, but one of the more liberal institutions now, and they speak funny up there, right? In Harvard, they're going to get in a car and drive to Harvard. I make fun of that because I, I like that. I, I kind of enjoy that. Uh, not that it's bad. I just think it's very, kind of, very interesting and, and kind, of, kind of nice, actually, to have those kinds of ways of speaking. Well, Harvard was started by Reverend John Harvard. But nobody tells you that. It was started by a Christian pastor, if you will. Upon his death, he bequeathed his fortune and, li fortune and library to what was then called Boston College. Not the one now, but back then, Boston College. Now, Harvard University. And he also left some to Cambridge. You know, kind of hedge your bets on that, that side of the sea, on this side of the sea. <coughs> We find very specific words in the Constitution of Massachusetts, 1780, referring to Harvard College. What did they say? They said exactly this. Many persons of great eminence have, by the blessing of God, been initiated into the, uh, those arts and sciences which qualified them for public employment, both in church and state. And whereas the encouragement of arts and sciences and all good literature tends to the honor of God, the advantage of the Christian religion and the great benefit of this and the other United States of America. That is in, uh, you, they probably have it buried in their basement somewhere, but that is in the original papers of Harvard. Also, I've mentioned to you before, William Tennant created the very first uh, live-in seminary in the United States. It was called the Log College, founded in 1727 the, uh, on York Road in, in Warminster. He was a minister. Why did he start the Log College? To train his own sons. Because he felt that the rest of them were getting rather liberal, 1727. So he started his own live-in, and others joined him. It was then, as I mentioned to you before, was then moved to New Jersey and became the flow of ministers who originally were part of the univer Princeton University. That's how Princeton University started. They were all ministers in their teaching. They came out of the Log College, starting in 1727. The Christian church founded this country. It just founded this country, and it was theirs to lose as well. And that's where I get angry with the church. The church has lost it, not you. The church has. Uh, it is our unfortunate history that the church has abdicated its great mission and allowed evil to subvert the great experiment. Have you heard that term before in history? The great experiment of the United States of America. Well, I'm here to tell you and all of the folks in our community, finally, that St. Martin's Anglican Church will not waver from the, this original mission of several hundred years ago of this experiment, regardless of the challenges we face. Today we employ, today we will in just a minute, employ the greatest weapon we possibly can, and that is prayer. Individually, ringing a bell on Tuesday, saying there is no less glory in an individual saying prayer as a group saying prayer. The Lord listens to you. So individually or otherwise, and today as a group, we are going to do the litany specifically on behalf of our country. I hope you have a copy. If not, we'll pass them back out to you. The litany on behalf of our country, if you have a copy. Don't have a copy? 
Could you bring some of the copies forward of the litany? I think folks are missing those here as well. Yeah, that one. Anybody need one? It's confusing when you have a bulletin and then an extra piece sitting next to it. I, I realize that. That's my fault. Thank you, sir. Now, this is a time that we really should, uh, as, as uh, would have been said by uh, Spurl and, and so many others, Read, uh, pray profoundly. That means with a large voice. Pray profoundly. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, following the litany. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Ghost, have mercy on us. O God, who has been pleased to magnify thy name amongst our ancestors and distinguish them by the particular marks of their piety, continue the same mercy to us, we beseech thee, that now in these days we may seek thee with all our hearts and zealously labor to copy the examples which our forefathers have left us. Amen. For this end, we most humbly implore thy goodness to have compassion on this our country and by thy powerful grace to remove from it whatever is provoking or displeasing to thee. Have mercy, O God, on this nation, and be thou its powerful deliverer from an infidelity and profaneness. Deliver us, O Lord. From all irreligion and contempt of thy sacred mysteries. Deliver us, O Lord. From all presumption and the abuse of thy holy word. Deliver us, O Lord. From all heresies and schisms. Deliver us, from gluttony and drunkenness, us, from the prof profanation of thy holy name in cursing and swearing, us, from all kinds of prodigality and sensuality, us, from frauds and all kinds of oppression and injustice, us, from the spirit of faction, of malice, hatred, and of every kind of uncharitableness. O oh God, thou hast been a father to this nation and replenished it with many blessings. Forsake it not now, we beseech thee, and give it not up to a reprobate sense. Bless this people, O Lord, and be thou their inheritance, and sanctify us, and make us a holy nation. Give to all its inhabitants, O Lord, the spirit of the gospel. Hear us, O Lord. Give to them a zeal for unity, peace, and truth. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that they may all seek the things that are above and walk by the Spirit of Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all that who are in error may, by thy heavenly light, be led into thy truth. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all sinners may be truly converted and forsaking their evil ways return to thee their God. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all scandals may be removed. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that the pastors may become the light of the world. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all magistrates may administer justice. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all of the wealthier ranks may esteem virtue, their greatest honor, and be ashamed of vice. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that the youth of both sexes may be withheld from all evil ways, and that they may dedicate their lives to virtue, piety, and religion. Hear us, O Lord. Grant that all obstinacy and blindness may be removed from the hearts of this people, and that being reformed according to thy blessed will, they may serve thee in holiness and truth. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord, now calling on thee, and through the infinite merits of thy Son, grant our petitions. With our trust in the Lord our God, we raise our voices together, asking to be guided in this season by the wisdom, mercy, mercy and compassion of the Lord. Lord God, ruler of all, we give thanks for the right to vote, and for those who fought have placed their lives on the line to secure this right. Help us to approach this responsibility as an act of faith with prayer and discernment. God of all nations. Lord God, ruler of all, watch over all candidates in this election and their families. Protect them from hatred and the unkindness of the election season. Stir them to speak and act with integrity. God of all nations. 
Lord God, ruler of all, we present to all at all polling locations that they would be places of peace and democracy. God of all nations. Lord God, ruler of all, open our hearts and eyes to the least of your children that our votes would represent an inbreaking of your kingdom here in this place, God of all nations. Lord God, ruler of all, in a season of division, remind us as a community of faith that what unites us is more powerful than what divides us, God of all nations. Lord God, ruler of all, help us all to truly love our neighbor and to act with love in all things, God of all nations. Let us pray. O Almighty and everlasting God, who has forsaken many Christian nations and in punishment of their sins has suffered them to be overrun by error and infidelity, grant, we beseech thee, that the rigor of these thy judgments may strike us with a timely fear, and that in earnest forsaking our evil ways, we may find mercy in thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give ear to us, O God, here assembled before thee, humbly prostrate in the confession of our unworthiness and wholly confiding in thy goodness and mercy. Here, likewise, O God, all those thy saints who in this country have faithfully served thee and, now, and are now happy with thee in heaven. Amen. Hear them praying for their country and let their intercession prevail through the merits of thy only Son, through which alone all prayers, whether on earth or in heaven, can find acceptance with thee. Amen. Amen. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Make haste, O Lord, to help me.
to the voice of thanksgiving of all the Holy Spirit's Lord. I have loved the happy nation of thy house and place that I am going to shut up my soul with its sinners and life and bloodthirsty. In his hands is wickedness and the right hand is full of gifts. But as for me, I will walk innocently. I will deliver me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth right. I will praise the Lord in the congregations. The Lord of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. On this day, we ask your prayers for the healing of Jetta, Rick, Susan, Delphine, Martha, and Earl, for Father Bill, Gary, Lisa, Ann, Caden, and TJ, for Deborah, Heather, Karen, Priscilla, um, Irene, I believe, um, Martha, uh, Colette, Peggy, uh, Jim, Jill, Teresa, uh, Carl Jr., Hal, Marion, uh, Joe and Steve, and Skip, and I'll add my granddaughter, she fell down and got a really good boo-boo on her forehead last night. So, uh, for London. Uh, the special needs of Father Horn, Faye, Noel, Ian, and Earl. For Alan, Martha. For President Trump, Ali, Lucas. For Merrill, Bob and Betty, Barb, Craig. For Caitlin, Lisa, Jennifer, Alan and Sue, June, oh, excuse me, John, Sharon, and Felicia. Oh, for the birthdays of Father David and Scott. And for travel for Doug and Joe. And for those that have passed from our presence and are now with our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ in heaven, we ask prayers for Rosella, Dorothy, Evelyn, Randall, Betty, Barbara, Chip, Timothy, Joe, Marilyn, Gwen, Yvonne, I believe it is, Mary Catherine, Lana, John Albert, Joe M, Marty, Kathy, Kathy Louise, Gwen, Maxine, and Gloria. May these souls and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. The Mass on this day is celebrated for the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Brethren, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. The Lord receive this sacrifice of thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both for our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to, Charles, or, or to, uh, uh, to Carl, our diocesan bishop, and to other, uh, all bishops and other ministers that they may both by our life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee, thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession unto Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. 
for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy, hath promised the forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here we come towards our Savior Christ, saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father in Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, who with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, O Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Ghost without any difference of any quality. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising the end saying. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that Thou of Thy tender mercy didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And that institute and in His Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, His precious death and sacrifice, until His coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these, thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech the merciful Father to hear us, and the Almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless 
and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed blood, body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain a remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto the Lord ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion. May we that receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Let us pray, and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Deliver us, we beseech thee, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, with Andrew and all thy saints, give peace graciously in our days, that we, being hopen by the succor of thy mercy, may both always be free from sin and safe from all disquietude. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with Amen.
We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. See the brother who called the Lord and called the Lord. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and be thankful. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
prayer that we receive to the mouth of the Lord, keep the pure heart, and that from this temporal gift may come unto his life everlasting. I've taken the blood which I've drunk, the Lord, Peter, and my soul, the breath, and the spots, and the body, and his meaning, hath been corrupted, and the sacrifice of his friend, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for the doubt of vouchsafed to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> O Lord, I will make mention of thy righteousness on, uh, only. Thou, O God, hast taught me from my youth up until now. Forsake me not, O God, in mine old age when I am gray-headed. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the operation of thy heavenly bounty may in such wise prevail upon us both in body and soul that the desires of our hearts being done away, we may in all things be governed by the effectual working of the same through Jesus Christ our Lord, who livest and reignest with thee, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Let us pray. On this day and during this coming week, may we as Christians understand the absolute gift that God has given us through our nation. May we share with others the gospel of our Lord, steeped in kindness and mercy, in support and forgiveness. May we bring all of this forward that so the love of God will bring this nation to its powerful stance again. Within this world, be the guiding light, not under a bushel, but on a hill. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.